Most of you guys know that we've been working really hard over the last couple of years on the documentary called Beyond the Tree Line. Well, today I'm here with Joel Gelzo. Uh, he's the director and producer of the documentary and he worked his butt off. So I thought we could sit down today and kind of talk through why he joined, um, joined the team and why he wanted to document this cool adventure. And I'm just thankful that we got to uh, got you to be able to help our family out making this cool documentary, but also making it such quality that we can share it with the whole world. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it was an honor. Um, you rarely get the opportunity to kind of explain like why a film gets made or actually like how it actually comes to fruition because um, especially nowadays with YouTube and everybody has phones, it's very easy to think you can just grab clips and then a movie just happens. Um, and it's easy to get a lot of clips, but to assemble like an entire story over two hours, which our documentary is, um, I mean, you're trying to distill like uh, about 130, 140 hours of an entire adventure. You guys hiked for 209 days, like, and that many hours of footage plus interviews to try to distill that. It's it's a process, and to try to take something like I've never I've I've done. I've done a sci-fi time travel film. I've done like short films and things that are not around real people. So it was different doing a film that about people I know, like I've known for a long period of time. And what's weird as a filmmaker is as you start getting into it, you kind of you really have to disconnect yourself from like who these people are and they don't they definitely start becoming like characters. And it's kind of weird it's, it's weird at first, but like you have to see that because you're always trying to process who is viewing this, like who is actually going to watch this, how are they going to understand it, you got to give context to things, because um, to try to document a trip that Josh and Cassie and Harvey did, like the most amount of hiking I've ever done is a 50 miler, like I mean I've done a little bit more than that, but maybe 100 miles total of my entire life at the time. So I know a, a lot about hiking in general, but I don't know much about through hiking and what it takes to do the journey that you guys did, let alone do it with your son. Um, so when you first initially said you were going to do this, now I've known Josh for a long time. So the second he even mentioned this, like years before they did, it was probably like right. three or four years before they actually went. You thought I, we were crazy. No, no, I didn't. I didn't. Not at all. Well. I, I, said if, no, I, said, I said, if Josh, if, if you actually did it, they're gonna do the whole thing. So like to me it was, if they actually decide to step out the front door and do it, I know they're gonna do it. So I just always said, back in my mind, just keep tabs if they ever do it. And so I you know, I heard like the year coming up and I'm like, okay, it does seem like they're actually gonna give it a real go for it. Because right. you guys had gone to Everest Base Camp and I tried editing that footage and then it broke on my machine and I didn't touch it for like forever. Which actually was a blessing because it worked out great to actually add into the right. story of the documentary. Yeah, it was funny when, when I gave you that thing, you were so like frustrated with me because yeah. I took my camera and I'm like, Whoa, oh, yeah. Whoa, oh man. Whoa. Uh, so like you said, Josh, if you're gonna film anything on your phone, just for your YouTube channel, even if we don't make a documentary, you said, Josh, hold the camera steady and still. Yeah, and, it's and tough. That, it's really tough it, to do that. It is because, um, I don't know, it's time goes by so much slower when you're looking behind You feel like, so you're, like, you feel like you're panning so slow, right. and then in reality, when you watch it back, you're like, oh, that was actually a little bit faster than I thought. You know? Yeah, so that was the first piece of advice you gave me. But a lot of people ask, like, how in the world did we get such good footage? Um, and they're like, did Joel hike with you the whole way? So, so talk to me a little bit about this, because at the beginning, um, you know, uh, my first goal was to just make uh, just just a history and just yeah. do a YouTube channel and just kind of track my journey. I didn't know if you were actually serious about following through yet. Yeah. So, so to be honest, so I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really reveal that. Like, I thought if you guys actually did it, like, I really thought this would be really good. Like, I thought it'd be like fascinating one because it'd be like kind of historic. Like, here's this kid does it. That'd be, that's just fascinating alone, just from that. Right. Oh, oh, little kid did it. That's pretty awesome. But I thought, depending on what footage starts coming back, I was gonna really have an idea of like, okay, I think I have something here. Because I think even early on, like when it was more serious, like, hey, we can make something. I had kind of said a few times, cause I was like, I talked to my wife and I was like, just the story of you and Cassie, like that's what sold me. It was not even Harvey. Cause I think what Harvey did was amazing, but seeing you guys all together was like, okay, now there's something here to it. Cause again, like, you are hiking something amazing and adventurous and hard, but it's 
from if you separate for yourself from that from a filmmaking perspective you're not climbing up a sheer cliff for 40 days and it's like every second someone's about to die right so like from a movie's perspective it's like oh the drama's not going to be there so but the drama to me was what is it like to be a family and live on the trail and so starting to see that and seeing like the intricacies because again the amount of people that have gotten that have literally thought you can pack all your food in your backpack i know i get that all the for time 2, miles. i mean <laughs> so like I tried to go in it from perspective of someone who has hiked right. 100 miles, not 2,000 miles or 80 or 300, none like that. Like, I think I've camped a few times on the trail, that's it. Like, so I was trying to go in the perspective of, you have people that are known hikers who love hiking, but you have people that have none or done, never done it before and had no idea this is even a thing. Most people had no idea where it started, where it ended. I mean, I didn't even when it initially started. Like, I knew bits of it because I heard it through when I was a kid, but not really. Right. So, I use that to my advantage to go, okay, what questions would I want to ask? What is interesting here? You know? And so I think it was fascinating even as this as the film started to develop, there were so many little lines or things that happened along the trail that I was like, okay, how do we include this? And I dude, I took all your footage and I had to really distill it down to, okay, this footage feels very much like YouTube. You know, you're you're vlogging, this is it. I needed to have some of the shots that just gave a context of like, what does it feel like to be on the trail? I want to hear the trees. I want to hear the birds. Like, that makes me feel like I'm there. So that was, that was like, a, <laughs> after all your footage, you got so much of it. Thankfully, I had enough. But what I was worried about was trying to find the puzzle piece of, did you have enough good footage in this section of the trail that I could use this piece? Uh, not quite enough. So I'd have to kind of like maneuver around it. And then I have to get to another section because I wanted to include the entire journey. I didn't want to include just the like the highlights or just the like more intense moments. It was like, how do you how do you find those moments? So like even okay, like it, it's it's awkward because I'm like here I'm editing something and I'm getting emotionally involved with it because I have to be because if I'm not, nobody else is going to be. Like I'm the director. I'm trying to like I'm trying to enhance what's there and make people feel like they're along on the journey. I'm not enhancing it and overselling it. I just want to sell what's actually happening. Cause it's like, you can't feel the pain you have in your feet or in your knees. So I'm trying to like connect that with, Oh, when you fall down, okay. Like, yeah, what happens when you get hurt? Like, okay, now are we off the trail for a couple of days? Now do you have the worries of like, can we finish? Like I was trying to get all that in. And then it was like, okay, how do I tell this story of like, Josh is kind of frustrated and stressed about coming home. Now to me, it connected with me because when I worked on my personal projects, it was very scary to end them because I didn't know what I was going to do after it. Like I just it's, just, it's just, it's just scary to get into one moment of life and then suddenly have, especially after what you guys did, that's a drastic change, like immediate. Like it's not like, yeah. oh, we're done and you can kind of slowly, you know, like uh, uh, like the analogy of like you take a long vacation, but then you take people to like to say, take a long like a uh, uh, train trip home. So it's like a mini slow vacation back into normal life. You guys were just like, bam, it's you're kind of back into normal life after living together nonstop, doing the same thing and that kind of environment. And so that's what inspired me to, to make it. And I was like, it was a lot of hours to edit and it's got to be worth it that I enjoy it. It's, it's I don't know if it's going to be worth it for the audience or if it will sell, but it was worth it to me because I'm like, I just love watching it. And I think it was a fascinating story. Well, it's definitely doing good because I'm getting tons of feedback from everyone that loves it, especially people that have hiked before. They really get to see the entire journey of the trail. So, so first of all, it's, it's working. I, I think everyone so far is really enjoying it. But what I want to know is while we were on the trail, you met us a couple of times on the trail. You drove out, you know, spent hours in your car to find us somewhere in the woods <laughs> to interview us throughout the yeah. trail with your nicer camera, um, which was which was really helpful. But you also got to interview a bunch of other people, um, you know, from, you know, uh, Nimble Will, no, no Bad, uh, Harvey's yeah. first uh, kindergarten teacher, his, um, you know, pediatrician, uh, a volunteer at the Appalachian Trail Museum. I mean, just just countless people and other families that have hiked. What was it like? Because a lot of those interviews you did before we were even done with the hike. So you didn't even know if we were going to finish, but you were out there yeah. interviewing people and making this happen. But but tell me some stories of, of, I mean, is there anything interesting that happened while you were interviewing? Yeah. So honestly, one of my favorite things about interviewing people is whenever I start, it's usually your, my main goal is let them get the fluff out. There's a lot of things people want to just spout and say, but I try to like get that, get that out first. And then to get to some of their like, just like 
off the cuff because that's what they're that's what they're gonna say to their friends and their family at home, like how they would speak normally. Like you have the proper speech and you this is what I say and I'm proud to be a hiker kind of thing. But it's like they're like, you know, it's hiking's tough. Like, you know, like with you you can tell it in their eyes. And so that was challenging because again, we're I was trying to just I just wanted to get authenticity. That's all I wanted. I just want authenticity of what do people think about your family doing this hike, good or bad. I, I just wanted to know, like, what was it like? Because again, like, I didn't know it. And there was some like apprehension of like, what are, what are you gonna do with this? And how are you gonna do this? I'm like, there's nothing like out there like this. Like, of course you can find thousands of videos on YouTube and people's vlogging trips and stuff like that. But I'd say from a official capacity in like, out to rent like Netflix that kind of thing it's like there's very little when it comes to Appalachian Trail material and I wanted to do it right I wanted to just make it something that felt like everyone can go on this journey if you've hiked it before you can recognize those moments or those sections so I was just trying to get and distill the interviews down to that not just man they're such a great family and it's so wonderful and I'm like okay that's really good I can't use that for every interview like I want, like, what else? Is there anything else? Like, if I hit stop, what else would you say? And so that's fun to kind of get those pieces because then you start really getting yeah. what they really think. And that's what I want to know. And that's also scary because I'm like, I'm making a documentary about my friends. And it's like, man, that's really good material. Not because it's like, oh, it's juicy and like drama, but it's like, that's fascinating. Because yeah. if, I, if I sat down to watch this movie, I would also be thinking, why the crap are you doing this? Like, <laughs> that's what I would be thinking that. Like, cause I mean, even seeing you guys hike and filming, I'm like, I felt like I hiked it. I'm like, I'm never doing this. <laughs> but like, but to be able to preserve it and to get those interviews and to put them in the, 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 I guess the method, the puzzle piece of the film, it was really challenging. But honestly, I just tried for like authenticity just to be like, okay, I heard what you said. Now tell me what you really think. I know, right? But yeah, and, and that was tough because I mean, like, remember I, I said that to you a couple of times when we were filming. I would be like, okay, no crap, just like, just tell me the truth. Did you have fun? Like, I don't want like you can just say like, man, that was really tough. Like, I just wanted to know that. Then go on because I think people have a hard time sometimes revealing. It's like I did this. I should have had fun, and they feel this overwhelming pressure to like. People think I had fun. I better I, I had better say I had fun. It's like. But did you? I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I didn't. Like, I mean, there's parts that was a lot of fun, but man, there was parts that was not fun at all. Like, I want to hear that because like that. I mean, that that's what people can relate to because yeah. everybody in life has those moments, and it's not all roses. And I just wanted to hear that, not necessarily for the extreme drama or the downs or ups, but just what did you really think? <laughs> uh, yeah, and in 209 days, and since you got to interview us several times, like you probably did see that, you know, there were times when we were really, really enjoying ourselves, yeah. especially in the summertime yeah. or in the spring. But then other times, yeah, we had those lows for sure. Um, and I think everyone does on the trail. The trail is something, cause I mean, anyone watching this interview is probably very interested in the trail and, and maybe have done it before. Um, and it wasn't fun, but it was an adventure yeah. and it was yeah. adventure of a lifetime. And that's, yeah. and, that, and that's what it was. So, uh, yeah. Like, I mean, well, that was why like the night before you guys left, it was, incredibly important for me to capture what did you think it was going to be like first because I thought it would also be just a neat time capsule so that you can look back and go mm -hmm. wow we were so excited because yeah. I mean I can remember how it was like thinking I'm going to make a film and then I spent 10 years trying to make my first film <laughs> like if I had known it was going to be 10 years no I probably wouldn't have like if you had known before you left certain hardships or certain things that were going to be stressful would that persuade you you never you know you don't know so it's just interesting from a time capsule and also a lot of documentaries tend to film interviews always at the end, a lot of them. Like they, they film stuff to fill in what's going on. I was, I really wanted to, to film stuff along the trip so that all your answers and replies and stuff were genuine in the moment. Like when you were getting ready for Katahdin and whatever it was, that was you the night before. I mean like, I, I try not to show up, but I felt so guilty making you guys camp with me and not the like other hikers. Cause I know that's like a thing. Like you got this whole distance, you went this whole distance and now you're camping with me. You know what I mean? Like I was really appreciative you did that, but like I knew I felt so guilty, but it was like, what do I do? Like I can't film there where you went 
<laughs> and I knew it was so important to see that night before. That that night was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, you know, for everyone, give everyone a quick <laughs> laugh. That I just, I just, you just recalled a story. No, it's so amazing. So, so Sugar Man was with us, yeah. and we told him, you know, there's nothing more important to hikers than than food. I mean, food is it. That's all we care about is is getting to eat. So we're like, Joel, bring <laughs> us some hot dogs. Bring us this. He he got a pack of hot dogs. <laughs> I like. I went back to just civilian life, thinking like, oh, I, like, I wasn't gonna have hot dogs, so surely it's enough. Like that wasn't enough for Harvey. I know. So the, we we had a pack of hot dogs for for Harvey, Cassie, myself, and Sugar Man, and you. Uh, and we're all like camping there right, last night on the trail, yeah, and we, uh, we went through that so fast. And we're just like, is there any more food? And he's like, no, oh, that's that's what we got. We're like. Really? Our last side of the trail, like we just we get to eat like three hot dogs instead of like twenty-four hot dogs. <laughs> Anyways, that was a funny story because you didn't understand how much we eat on the trail. Dude, that whole <laughs> that that whole night, that was a great you story. have no idea how stressed I was. I was so stressed because I mean that whole summer while you guys were hiking everything, I had hiked a mountain near me probably about twenty-five times. Like I mean, like any chance I could on the weekends, I would just run out for forty-five minutes, hike up, hike back down. I'd pack lots of weights in my backpack. I was just trying to get my legs okay because what I was nervous about, I wasn't nervous about hiking Katahdin the first time. I was just nervous knowing if this, if storms really rolled in and it was like, okay, we gotta turn back. It's not safe for us, not safe for Harvey or whatever it is. I know I'm gonna be really sore and I was very sore the, the next day after it, even after trying to train as much as I could when I could. But if I was sore. I couldn't hike the second day. Like then I couldn't film it. Yeah. So it was like so much planning. I mean, it was probably like four or five months worth of planning to get a campsite at Katahdin, to get all that approval, to get like written approvals that we could even film the darn thing. And then it was like finding out last minute. I thought I was going to get dropped off and I could just hike with you guys. It's like, nope, wasn't allowed. So I had to get campsites. I stayed up till midnight for about seven days to get how many, I, I, I purchased like seven different campsites on different days because I didn't know what was going to happen. Because like you guys had to GPS text me and so here I'm driving like, tw like 20 hours to Maine to get to you guys and I couldn't really connect with you guys easily. No. You know, I was so nervous because yeah, like, a lot of people don't understand how hard the permitting process is for Katahdin. Uh, yeah. For through hikers, we can walk in like me and Harvey. We went back to Katahdin this year um, yeah. that we just released in our YouTube video, but um, we actually did the whole hundred and uh, hundred mile wilderness prior yeah. just so you can walk into Katahdin. It's a lot easier to hike a hundred miles than to get a permit to get into. Yeah, it was uh, it was ridiculous. Park. Like I had I had prepped my backpack, <laughs> all my lenses. Tripled, like it's funny. I had and that one lens dude, weighed like forty pounds. Dude, I had, <laughs> it wasn't that much. I had yeah, I had heavy. one heavy lens, and I only used it for that one epic shot. That was it. And I mean, it was it was great, but I had like eight batteries. Right. I only used one that whole day. That's what's crazy. That battery lasted all sing freaking day. It's a like, miracle battery. I was, I was so nervous. I was so nervous yeah. to film that, and then asking you guys to like. Don't use your phones. Because I was thinking like, okay, like a documentary. You guys, I mean, imagine that same shot at the end if you've seen the film and they're, you know, emotional and they're, you know, whatever, giving hugs and stuff, trying to pull out their phones and film each other at the same, you know what I mean? Like, if I wasn't there, like, be a much different look. That was a big ask because I was like, I can't mess this up. Because there is no like, all right, let's do another take. Like, you don't do that. And I, I don't do that either. Like, part of me, what I like about documentaries and this kind of filmmaking is I consider it jazz. It's the improvisation of, I gotta just figure out in the moment what works. And I found a spot, I just held it, and I was just sitting there going, please. And I, my lens fogged up, and literally two minutes before you guys showed up, I swapped it just in time, hit record, and I started hearing you guys come out of the fog. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that, <laughs> that was a crazy day. And the, the, another crazy thing in, uh, um, about when, when I went back to Katata with Harvey, this just comes back to another memory. I don't know if you remember, it was so rainy in there. It was yeah. so wet. That's why your lens fogged up because it was just yeah. so cold and you, we couldn't see anything. It was completely white out, which made it super epic. But when me and Harvey went back, right behind the sign is actually a cliff with an amazing view that we get to see. And you get to see like Knife's Edge and everything, oh, which we did. Uh, yeah, it would have been awesome, but I had no clue. When we got there, I'm like, this can't be the right spot. Like I thought we were just on this flat area. I, I know, realized. yeah. Like, like I thought, it, I thought it went on for a good little while. Ways right. It was so yeah. foggy that day. Um, but uh, tell me about when you went to the Appalachian Trail Museum. Like obviously, you said when you started this journey, you didn't really know too much about yeah. the trail. What, what did you learn there? Um, I learned a lot. Like I, you know, I mean, like some of the pieces that actually didn't quite even make it into the film uh, was just learning about how, like, 
how the Appalachian Trail has become popular and faded and popular again, and it's definitely on the rise. And uh, they were mentioning how it's almost being loved to death right now, in a way that they're, they're like at least thinking the next decade or so, like how do we maintain the trail? Because like how do you you don't want to like completely stop people from doing it because it's such it's people love it so much but how do you maintain it but just even like learning about that and then also thinking like okay here i'm making a film like is this going to inspire more people but i'm like you can't like you can't stop it like people like people do it on youtube every single day they're sharing what they love and to me it was like trying to share a story just about something that was significant like i have other pieces that even talk about the, his, the history of the trail and who hiked it and what kind of shoes they wore and just learning all about that was just so fascinating. And I think it was also, like to me the most fascinating part about your guys' trail was the fact that, yeah, like all the towns you had to go in and all the people you met and how you had to repack in and, and pack out and just the kind of changes, like you'd get in a rhythm and how you'd say like with Harvey, obviously you get in a rhythm and the second you kind of dip out, you have that nice shower and stuff, it's kind of like, okay, you almost want to, you got to dive right back in before it like, like you do a lot Sucks of work, you back you know, in. Like a workout for a while and you take right. those two days, it's very easy to not want to continue working out again. And that's what made it tough. Like to me, it's like learning about the physicality of the trail, but really it was just mental. It was like, it just was huge. Mental was the biggest part that was like, wow, this looks so tough. Yeah. And then like, mentally keep going, yeah, I want to do this, especially, yeah. especially when you're talking about like the Virginia, like the 500 miles of Virginia or whatever, like, it's a lot of the same. And I'm like, and I can understand, because I mean, I've, I had 50 miles of it and I'm here as a kid, I'm thinking like, there's a lot of parts where I just remember looking down at feet, you know, like there's a lot <laughs> of that, you know? Yep. So yeah, I, I, learning about those aspects. Um, and again, just trying to ask people, play dumb. Like, I don't know anything about this. To, uh, introduce me into this world, you know what I mean? You guys know the lingo. You guys know what this means, what that means. What does that mean to me? Like if someone else, I want to watch, like, I'm seeing these people for the first time, especially because, again, you, you, that hook of, there's a kid who did it? That's crazy. And then those people are probably not going to be hardcore through hikers that might have that, like, really? Like, they won't understand. And then they want, I want to introduce them and give them context to the preparation you guys did. And, like, yeah, what's I, that story? Yeah. You, you said uh, there was a family that, that hiked with teenagers a long time ago, and then um, they got to relive their journey through, through your documentary, and they got to watch it. And you told me a story about what they felt when they first got to see, see Harvey doing it, and they were a little worried. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. A, a good friend of mine, I, I was thinking of actually interviewing him. I didn't get time, and it ended up not needing to because we'd had enough, and it was just like, it was too much. But he was telling me when he did the, the trail when he was 12, he did it with his dad, and like watching it, he was just like, he was 100% back in the moment, 100%. Like, I remember that, I remember this, I remember that. But he said his mom was watching, and she said like just the, almost the whole time, she was like, why are they doing this? How is the kid doing? Like she was just like fearing no. and fretting the whole time. But it was like the last third, she was like in tears. <laughs> and she was just like, this is just amazing. I'm so glad they did this. And I, it was just really funny. But he, but my friend who had hiked it, he was laughing the whole time because he knew that was going to happen with his mom because it was just that instant of like, why would you do this? And then, because I think, I think the same thing even with my mom, like seeing with my kid, it's like, you know, when you're raising kids, like you get used to them for a while, so you know how they're going to trip or how they're going to do things. But when you see a new kid, you kind of don't know what their skills are yet. Yep. And I think that's what people forget when they watch these kind of things is they see their kid going, well, my kid can't skateboard, so certainly your kid can't skateboard. I'm like, well, they might have been trying to practice skateboard for the whole life and their kid just tried it two days ago, you know, but your kid is really good at doing this and yeah. this, you know, and it's like, it's, you could see what Harvey's skill was like the fact that like, again, he just, it was his life. He just, he loved it. Like I could, he blew my mind and he was, it was always so funny because he was always like this nice passive aggressive that I always laughed <laughs> because we'd be hiking up Katahdin and he'd just be like, why is Joel so slow? You know, because, <laughs> but he was just so curious. Like, I don't understand it. And, and, and I told Josh, I was like, if you guys have to pause at any moment, I'm just going to keep on going because I had to film you guys coming up. And I was like, that's going to be very hard if I have to like constantly run ahead because I can't do that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, thank you so much for coming out here. Um, for ever, all you guys that uh, haven't seen the documentary yet, please go take a look at it. And for all of you that have already seen Beyond the Tree Line, 
definitely leave a comment below because I love to hear your feedback. It's been fun. Me and uh, Joel had a couple watch parties uh, with, with locals and we watched it with them. And it's just so much fun to hear people, especially people that have never seen the trail before. So anyone that loves outdoors but doesn't know anything about the Appalachian Trail, it's so educational. Yeah. And um, have you gone out and hiked because of it? I know probably a dozen or so families that told me, like, yeah. we went hiking the next day. Their kids were like begging them. like. Wow, that's that's kind of wild. <laughs> like like yeah. that, you, that 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 happens, but yeah, yeah it was funny. This, this year, Carby gave his teacher uh, a copy of the documentary as a uh, as a gift. Um, so he's like, here, here's my documentary. His teacher was really proud like, to watch huh? it. It was, it was a lot of fun. Um, but anyways, thank you, Joel. I appreciate thank it. You. And and let us know what you guys think about the documentary.